So as you could probably tell by the sheer amount of videos that I put out, I go through a lot of footage. I end up recording pretty much hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes of gameplay in just a couple of days. So I needed more storage on my main system. Unfortunately, at this point, I am pretty much tapped out in terms of SSD space, at least in terms of M.2s. So I picked up this dual M.2 PCIe card on Amazon, hoping that I would be able to expand my storage in a way that was very cheap because I actually managed to get these Intel 660p SSDs, both of them for $60 each on Newegg. So for the price of both of these, I'm able to get two terabytes compared to just buying a two terabyte hard drive for all, or SSD rather for almost $200. Now, this jumbled mess of letters here that is this product, if we open it here, you can see what it is. Now, very quickly, you'll notice that there are some issues that I'm going to be running into here, but inside the box is a SATA cable, the different size PCIe brackets, and of course, the card itself. The card does conveniently come with some heat sinks for the SSDs. I personally am not a fan of using these just because of the fact that I kind of swap SSDs around a lot and it kind of becomes more of a hassle for me, but I would just use them if this is going to be a long-term storage thing for you. Immediately looking at the PCIe card, you should be able to tell what the issue I'm going to run into is. If you haven't realized what the issue is, the top slot is actually a SATA port, not a PCIe NVMe slot. Luckily, I actually have this team group SATA SSD laying around. Personally, I actually don't recommend this thing, but uh, it does get the job done here. It's just extremely slow. I gotta say, I am disappointed that it isn't a dual NVMe uh, thing. Uh, I should have paid more attention to the listing for sure, but it was kind of misleading in how it was describing it. It made it seem more like it had both ports be both NVMe and SATA instead of just, you know, one being NVMe and the other one being SATA. I should have paid more attention. Obviously, that's what the SATA cable is for. You actually hook up the SATA cable to that port so that that SATA M.2 port actually has a SATA connection. Of course, even though it wasn't exactly what I wanted, it actually did do the job of letting me increase the amount of storage that I have on my main PC. I was just hoping it would be more like this NVMe PCIe expansion card that I've used before. But jumping into the actual installation, it was really easy to just slot it into one of the PCIe slots. It was no problem whatsoever. And the drives just show up instantly on the computer. Now, one of the drives, of course, was being used by me. The other one is fresh. They do just show up right here. Now, one of them has the warning sign, but that is the one that was being used on another computer and it ran perfectly fine. The test showed everything was perfectly fine. At the end of the day, it did not really fit the needs that I needed it for, but it did do a good job of what it's meant to be used for. Really looking into it further, these dual port NVMe PCIe cards are actually pretty expensive and they actually require some more advanced features from your motherboard than I originally anticipated. So this is really why this kind of exists. And at the price that this sells for of just under $20, I mean, I managed to get it for $17, it's not a bad deal. But of course, you do compromise on the fact that you are now stuck using a SATA SSD, which I think for the most part should be fine for most people. But if you're someone that does need an SSD for heavy, heavy usage, that might be a downside. I could get away with using a SATA SSD if I actually had one that was, you know, decently fast. But I mean, I got these two Intel SSDs for cheap and they're both PCIe. So I'm just going to have to find another card that is going to fulfill the needs that I, you know, need here. But it is going to be a very interesting journey. But I just got to say, this card itself, it does its job well and it really is targeting a kind of different segment than what I was going after. So if you're interested in picking up one of these cards yourself, you can, of course, use the affiliate links down below to do that. I will also leave some links to some recommended SSDs because the one I'm using here, the SATA one, is going to give you a very bad experience compared to most other more reputable branded SATA SSDs. So you got to be careful on what you're going to be buying. 
but I will be also looking at a 4X PCIe card that I actually managed to find on Amazon. Now for that, I do need a motherboard with bifurcation, but I recently found out that my motherboard actually does support bifurcation. So that's going to be interesting. Be sure to subscribe to find out about that. But anyways, I will see you guys next time.